gentleman from New York is recognized. I rise for a point of order. Uh, the gentleman will state his point of order. Madam Speaker, I, I make a point. The House is not in order. The House will be in order. Madam Speaker, I make a point of order that the consideration of this resolution is in violation of the House rules that we just passed, in which a new section was created to Rule 21 that required at least three days' notice to consider legislation, that it be posted on the Internet and we have a chance to review it. It is particularly important in this case, since we're dealing with a constitutional issue, one that is without precedent, and I insist on the point of order. The chair, the chair must observe that the rule cited applies to bills and joint resolutions. Point upon an inquiry. And pursuant to the rule, all points of order are waived. Point of parliamentary inquiry. Gentleman will state. Am I to understand that under the rules that were just passed, they're already being exempting this resolution, which is of a question of the interpretation of the Constitution of the United States, that it's already being waived, that that new rule requiring three days is already being waived? The rule that the gentleman cites only applies to bills and joint resolutions. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Pursuant to Section 3 of House Resolution 26, the gentleman from California, Mr. Dreyer, and the gentleman from New York, Mr. Weiner, each will control two minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from California. Madam, Madam Speaker, uh, I am going to be... Um the House is not in order, Madam Speaker. The gentleman's correct. The House is not in order. The House will be in order. The House is, needs to be in order. Members and staff will take their conversations from the floor. The gentleman Madam from Speaker, California. I'm going to be the only speaker on our side, so I will reserve the balance of our time. The gentleman from California reserves the balance of his time. The gentleman from New York. I, I thank you. I thought that the chairman was going to say that he was going to be brief. Well, you had no choice with this rule. It's a pretty short one. And I just want to uh, say in the brief two minutes that we have here that this is a pretty important issue that we're faced with. And I should say just at the outset that I have the greatest respect for my friend Mr. Sessions. I consider him to be a friend and I hope to get to know Mr. Fitzpatrick as well and to call him a friend as well. But what we're dealing with today is perhaps the most basic test that we have of whether we're going to take legislation seriously. To the great credit of the maker of this resolution, which we just got, it stipulates right in the first couple of sections, we violated the Constitution on our very first day. The constitutional requirement for oath was violated, and I give you great credit for recognizing that in the resolution. Now, you do say that it created nullities, which is frankly a way of saying we operated outside this document on the same day we were reading it. When Mr. Sessions and Mr. Fitzpatrick stood up in front of a television set and held their, held their right hand up, not unlike about 2,000 of my constituents, I suspect, they were violating a very important part of these proceedings. And yet we have a grand total of two minutes on each side, Mr. Dreyer and to my colleagues, in which to debate how to fix that infirmity. Mr. Sessions presided over the Rules Committee during a large portion in which he was not even a duly sworn member of the United States Congress. Yet we're doing nothing to go back and see was that, that participation influenced proceedings at all. I strongly urge my colleagues to vote against this resolution, not because Mr. Fitzpatrick and Mr. Sessions are not members of Congress. They clearly are, and I congratulate them. But because for the first time in American history, the first time in the history of this body, we are going to pass a, 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 a fix of a constitutional infirmity with, wait for it, four minutes of debate when we didn't have the bill until just now. And I strongly urge my colleagues to think about the precedent this sets. And I ask, you now, I ask the consent of the, of, the, of the chairman for an additional just one minute so we can have an understanding I, I, I here. Have, I have no authority to do that. This is under the rule that... No, you... you uh, if, 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 if the gentleman will I, I, I yield... The gentleman, I don't have the authority to do that. We're living under this the, rule. No, the, 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 the gentleman may yield to unanimous consent Time's request. Expired. The House will be only, in order. The only, House will only be in you, order. Only you, Mr. Dreyer, have the ability to accede to unanimous consent request. Does the gentleman from California yield for that? 
I have my time, and I will be uh, utilizing that, Madam Speaker. The, yell- the gentleman to- from New York's that- time has expired. That- uh- <laughs> the gentleman from California is recognized.